and welcome back to the Genesis Designs of Monocraft Bench. And for this little video we're going to have a, a slight departure from the norm and we're going to build a lorry. Um, it's not a complete de departure, it isn't my first lorry although it's not far off. Um, but of late, over the last year or two, I've developed an appreciation for building military vehicles if not any particular skill set. Um, and this is the latest in the line of builds which I've been doing and will continue to do for the uh, UK importers of the Zvezda kits. So what we have here is the 172nd Russian ICBM launch vehicle or um, the SA-21 Growler if you prefer. Um, not not a very big box as you see and this isn't actually the box so in true Zvezda style this is actually an empty vessel the box is inside this box you take this box off and inside you get a completely separate stealth box which is a top opener nice sturdy boxes actually these are really good um, but the slip on covers are a bit of a pain they can be a bit awkward to get off anyway let's have a quick trot through the parts Take those out of the way. Uh, you get four frames. These two are copies of each other, identical. So these are actually obviously the. Um, I'll take this out of the way because it's confusing background. These are the actual missile launch tubes. So four in total, and a lot of very small pieces, as you can see. Everything in, in true Vesta style, honestly. It's it's very very crisply moulded, very sharp, nice petite sprue grates and there is there is some crazy fine detail on these parts, they're so so good. And then the other two, and this is one problem that I, I think maybe, especially for reviewing and videoing such things, there is a host of very unrecognisable parts here, um, there's a side piece. I could tell because it's got windows. I think these are the sides of the chassis, the chassis itself. Um, but obviously, it's all very, very bitty. And the last one, I can recognise a ladder and an engine block. Um, but again, just the detail on those parts it's so fine it's so crisply molded it's just beautifully done uh, and honestly you're looking at looking at these parts it's one of those where you just think I, I want to get on with this right now uh, along with that you get eight black sort of vinyl-y style tires uh, they don't have any sort of sidewall detail particularly but the tread patterns molded quite nicely although there are, I oh, can't really see, lateral seam lines running around these tyres as well as a radial one sort of around the inside of the tread there so I know vinyl rubber tyres aren't to everyone's taste, I don't really have an opinion either way personally um, but I know they're not to everyone's taste. Here's the uh, colour information, there are three I remember correctly yes three schemes catered for this this is a air defense regiment in combat mode camouflage scheme one from Sevastopol Crimea in summer 2019 very basically black chassis green body gray missiles nothing spectacular about that color call that's up here in uh, Tamiya and over the side we have a second scheme here from the Moscow Victory Parade of 2017 so it's got that natty stripe detail along the canister and the one that I'm obviously going to do is um, also Crimea summer 2019 but this is Camouflage Scheme 2 and it's the same as the other one except that the, the, the missile canisters are two-tone green camo so that's the colours you get decals there's a silver sort of foil self adhesive there which is for the mirrors decals themselves very very thin and as you can see just a bunch of numbers so you can 
piece together what you need numbers wise there and then it's, it's really just a bit of stencil detail a couple of number plates and these stripes should you want to do the military display version and transparencies very very small sprue just a few windows there aren't that many windows on this vehicle it's only got one in the front for example but really and truly for this kind of quick inbox shuffle one of the easiest ways to, to illustrate the sort of level of detail in this kit is actually to show you the instructions so so a little line drawing at the bottom showing you can assemble it with the uh, missile launcher tube stacked up right ready to go or on the bed for transport a little bit of bump about the vehicle there in English pause the video if you want to read that sprue layouts they always put these in the sprues are numbered though so um, it's not massively important but they're always there with Vestas and here's your actual build sequence and a, a bit of a curiosity with Vesda and they, um, they always do this um, some may know and I'll insert a photograph somewhere logical that I built the Kamaz 5350 Mustang six wheel truck recently again for this Vesda importer and this was the same you had sub assemblies in this left column and then those sub assemblies were referenced in the main assembly uh, sequence so it, it is a bit a tiny bit confusing until you get your head around the fact that you need to build one a and one b separately to then perform step one uh, and this is quite common along along these instructions so this is obviously the cab ouch staple and then going through truck truck bed that's like the little machinery area that's between the cab and the, and the back and you've got the actual backbone of the launching part here sort of the cradle that the missiles are attached to and there we are sort of bringing those parts together to 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 create so you'd end up with a, a cab that's done a flatbed with the launcher that's done and then you start on the chassis and here you start to see here's a chassis rail we're putting all of the drivetrain in so all the axles drive shafts between them and continuing down at the other half and you can see the amount of pieces here and the amount of detail that's going into this this is 170 second scale remember bring it up closer i think that's that better shows the level of this kit than, than really looking at the small parts can because they're not recognisable in and of themselves unless you know exactly what you're looking for and I'm not going to lie I don't so there we carry on some air canisters and whatnot popped on there and then finally right at the end you bring all of those sub assemblies together plonk the wheels on and the missiles on and you're done but I think you can appreciate from looking at that the level of detail that's in this kit and the level of assembly that it's going to require um, the fact that it's broken down into those sub assemblies is quite handy because obviously I think for painting purposes if you wanted to paint it completely you're going to need to have that chassis separate to paint everything black and then the cab can be painted green and, and weathered and whatnot and popped onto it so on the back of the box then there's a couple of photographs of a completed prototype these are often quite well put together models but then they do give you an idea of what what you can expect from your finished model and obviously again you can see some of that detail there it's even got the jacks that they put down when you're going to launch so anywho we have 283 parts going into this quite a lot and the finished model is 18 centimeters long so you know that is not it's not terribly large for nearly 300 pieces so what i plan to do with this video then i will i will be building this alongside other projects and what have you and i'll just film some little segments of it i don't want it to be a massive long video but i'll film some little small segments of the build pop in some some chat and some thoughts as i go along and then a reveal at the end so it's just a quick sort of out of box re review but not in too much depth because as I say I 
don't profess to be an expert on military models, military vehicles or modelling them. Uh, I just enjoy it and I, and I thought I'd share it with you. So I'll be back with some construction work at a later time. Alrighty then, you join me back here at the bench a few days after the first part and um, this is built. It's, I think I said in the first part here, we've got 283 parts in this kit. Um, and yeah, it takes a few minutes to put them all together. But as I'll show you now, the, the <laughs> level of detail is absolutely crazy. So starting with the easy parts then, we've got our missile launching tubes. Bring these up bit by bit. There we go. Some really nice detail on these. They're not the join line is not yet dealt with on these but they're put together. You've got a choice of end caps as so, so with some sort of bar detail on rather than these. Uh, but I just chose these whoopsie arbitrarily because I prefer the look of them. So there four missile tubes these attached to this, this is the hydraulically activated launching arm boom, I don't know, whatever you want to call it and the rocket rocket tubes basically just pop onto this like so, so there'll be four of um, this is one area where I found the instructions quite difficult, if I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to point this out successfully on camera to be honest but you see the small blocks here where the rocket tube actually butts up here um, for the version 1 it butts in front of this block for version 2 it butts behind it the, instruction, the instructions don't make that terrifically obvious but this is your launch arm and yeah the, 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 the detail on this is just mad quite a lot of parts gone into that but at no point I don't honestly think any of it is is so complicated that it's complicated for its own sake to be fair it, it's it's actually quite well broken down you got rubber tires plastic wheels the the, the rubber is the kind that uh, plastic cement has absolutely no effect on so either super glue your wheel hubs in or just rely on uh, the join between the two halves of the wheel. It should it would pop out if you really really pushed it, but it won't just fall out. Uh, then we got the truck bed part. This the hydraulic arm fits onto this, and it can be done in the sort of raised up position or the travel position. I'm going for the travel position. And again, constructed out of multiple, multiple parts, but in, not in any way complicated at any point. Uh, but builds up to a very satisfying little construction. This piece on the front, this sort of mechanic cab bit, it was separate and, uh, and it's glued on at the front here. I did have some issues with this ladder assembly that you can see here. Uh, as built, the mounting points for it in the floor led to the ladder itself not being able to reach this so there was also a quite a difficult joint on this flat part so I cut the ladders free or cut the lower part of the ladder free added this plastic card to cover the joint and then cemented the ladder further forward so that it all reached so that's a slight deviation just to make that work there's another mechanical section separate part this actually attaches to the chassis sort of like so when we're ready to go the chassis itself then this is this is by far the most complex part to build of, of the whole model uh, the fuel tanks aren't yet glued they'll come off so you've got all sorts of drive shafts and gearboxes in there the engine block is just a representation that can be so that there's something there when it's looked at from underneath and there's some slight sort of glimpses of it in this area through the sides of the cab you then all these cross members are put into one half and then the two chassis rails brought together 
and then all these torsion bar parts have to be added to the side and then each of these eight wheels has two separate wishbones and a hub all separate parts they have to be added and I'm not going to lie it is a bit on the tedious side it's not uh, it's not terribly complicated but there's a lot of repetition there uh, it also pays to pay very careful attention to the instructions because when when these wishbones are assembled into position they're, they're not vertical at the end so the hub has to be the correct way up and you have to use the right two wishbones for it all to line up but line up it does I have checked it and I think I think she says touch wood all the all the wheels will touch the ground at the same time um, we've got here this is sort of a stabiliser jack assemblies which will be mounted to the chassis rails at a later point there are four of those this is the actual hydraulic ram which fits into the deck there there is a long version for the raised bit and then finally the cab itself as you can see it's still open at this point so that I can paint the inside of it before fitting it together a couple of seats to go in there uh, and the steering column which you can see here and and this all the way the joints are on this I, I could fill and neaten a few of these a touch and I may but basically if you look at this part you see how those edges are chamfered and the way it's the way it goes together all of these chamfered edges meet another chamfered edge so the actual joint is right on the corner okay, that took it. there you go and you can see that that even without glue virtually isn't the joint anymore so, and it does this this can lead to some really awkward filling and sanding and neatening but in this case it fits together exceptionally well there's very very little in the way of gaps on any of these parts and they all fit together in this way so they've got these mitered joints like my fingers are there that butt together and give a sharp corner and they do throughout the kit it fits absolutely marvellous um, so despite the high parts count and relative complexity for what isn't a large model as you can see now this is not going to build up to be all that big when it's done it does fit together beautifully and it goes together quite easily there is just a lot of it okay here we are with some paint on then so first things first I need to explain something that happened with this so this is a truck bed and I've now fitted the the boom I suppose you could call it and you may recall just a few moments ago that I mentioned that the steps arrangement here didn't seem to fit and that I altered it so that it would fit it turned out when I started to move on with construction from that point that I had actually somehow managed to fix the chassis rails in the wrong position they're actually looking at it now I don't know how on earth I managed it but there is a um, hopefully I can point this out there we go here the very end of the chassis rail here there's a vertical step in it which clearly sits at the back of this flatbed and somehow I'd managed to put it underneath anyway long story short it was my my mistake um, there's not meant to be a gap between the end of the flatbed and this machinery housing equipment box area which I did think was odd and funnily enough without that gap everything fits the way it should um, unfortunately uh, I could not disassemble the chassis rails from my flatbed and I've had to go out and buy a whole separate kit just for a new flatbed and it's underneath chassis rails but therein is an advantage because what I've actually done is animated this boom um, now that it's a part I had thought about it after the fact initially and couldn't do it because I'd already assembled things but this having to do it again meant that I could so what I've done is I I drilled out the fixings at the sort of fixing area on the bottom of the boom here and I've used a piece of tube brass tube uh, Albion alloys to go straight through the whole thing so that that can pivot and what I've actually done 
is this central portion here you can't tell but this central portion here is a slight is a, is the next size up on the slide fit um, so it can spin freely uh, and the reason for that is that when I fit the, the the actuator, the jack, whatever you want to call it, this is also drilled straight through the middle of this all the way down to the end and this has a piece of brass tube in it too and what will happen is I will glue the tube to that uh, rotatable, sorry I'm talking nonsense, is this part here the pivot point for the actuator is just in there and it hopefully I, I've got a small screen to look at but maybe you see this pivot point goes through here so that's actually two pieces of slide fit you can see the brass on the inside of this here two pieces of slide fit so this central part can spin so when I attach the actuator onto this it will be able to turn as this comes down so if the geometry of the kit is correct and there's no guarantee that it is this will be able to to, to raise and lower if it won't work with the jack then I'll just leave the jack off but um, yeah I did that so painting wise then this has all obviously had its base colours put on now uh, the main sort of bodywork colour this green I've used uh, Tamiya XF13 which is Imperial Japanese Army Green so that's on all of the, the sort of the three main areas then this boom I painted with XF61 which is simply dark green and I've done that just to provide a bit of relief from just one overall colour not because it's an attempt at any sort of accuracy uh, the chassis is obviously black that's Tamiya Lacquer Paint number 5 LP5 semi gloss black same with the wheels and then the missile tubes which took forever and a day to sort all the seams out and then it took another forever and a day to spray this camo on them but the the base colour is XF65 which is field grey which I find hugely amusing for a colour that's very obviously green um, and the camouflage colour is XF71 which is um, IJN copper grey, copper green so that's those so the seams on them obviously all the way God, all the way down each half and with all of these sort of all this raised rib detail was a real it was a real pain to clean it up and there's it's inevitable that there'll be some sort of slight losses of, of detail and crispness for this but it's one of them where you've just got to suck it up um, and get over it really because to do it for it to be perfect you'd end up having to rebuild all these all this strap detail and what you what you could what have you and I didn't want to get into that so that took quite a while and then painting this camo on because as you see these these aren't very big so doing freehand camo at this scale is is time consuming but um, got there in the end and I've just made it up it's just made up camo there is a picture I do have an instructions and it seems like maybe the canisters have matching patterns on them but again there's not enough information there to really build the camouflage scheme for me so I just didn't bother and I uh, made it up so uh, humble apologies if anybody is a Russian vehicle spurt and they're being triggered by any of this I'm, I'm really sorry but <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's just the way it is so yeah all of that once painted has been treated to a coat of the VMS satin varnish which I can't recommend enough it is absolutely splendid stuff it just it's completely idiot proof um, goes straight into the airbrush it's got a lovely little petite applicator you can literally put it into the airbrush drop by drop no need for any wastage ever uh, and just blap it on and it um it yeah this is the finish you get it does it dries quickly it's easy to it's brilliant uh, this scale model shop in the UK uh, distributor for these say if you haven't ordered it in from um, Europe Poland is where it, where it comes from uh, 6 95 for this this is 50 mil six pounds 95 so super recommend that anyway I'm gonna get on I'm gonna do some weathering I'm not gonna go nuts with it um, I'll talk you through it when it's done and then we'll have some finished stuff 
Okay, so it's time to put some decals on this thing. And it seems I've accidentally found a use for Alclad gloss varnish. Uh, excuse the sarcasm. It's not um, a type of varnish that I'm really keen on. It's a, this is a full-on water-based, water-washable gloss. Uh, and I wouldn't use it to gloss a model with, ever. So, uh, it, forgive me, it does work. I did the Dora that you've seen in some of the other in some of the other videos. Uh, I did use it because I was using a solution box to prove a point, and it does work. But it doesn't work as well as what I use, which is X22 with Mr. Color Thinner, which gives you a gloss like that from two coats straight over your base finish. So. It isn't that good. Anyway, enough said. So this model was painted with VMS satin. And you can see, lovely finish on it. Just a nice level of gloss. But not glossy enough for decals, nowhere near. Um, but I didn't want to gloss the whole model. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, but keeping it succinct, I just didn't want to bury the weathering. It's quite subtle. Uh, sort of dust effects and what have you and I, I didn't want to lose it all under gloss and then remat so I thought I will use clear it's good old Johnson's clear some of you may still use it some of you may have used it in the past um, but you can use it to lay decals onto so I set to digging out my Johnson's and it's buried under the bench on my left here somewhere and um, frankly couldn't be bothered to fish it out so I thought I'll I'll try this Alclad gloss to do the same thing and it works um, here at the back, you can see these there's black circles on the back of these missile cans and then these numbers on the back of the boom. If I just bring the light. There we go. And you can see that they're on there and they're shiny and they're stuck down and they look pretty decent. Um, but that doesn't prove anything, you cry. It could be silvered when you put the mat on. Well, because I was ready for you to say that, I've matted the ones on the side, please focus camera. And as you can see, despite some quite adventurous textures in some of these, there's no silvering to be seen on any of those. So I'll, sh I'll quickly show you how to go about using something like this as a, as a decal aid. I'll just bring the camera in a touch tighter. All right, I've got some decals that are already soaked here. Um, goes over there right so all you have to do instead of like using your mister set or whatever bit of alclad on a brush and pop it where you're going to put the decal so it leaves a little puddle like that and grab your decal one the one that says four on it and pop it into the puddle like so square it up and squish out all the excess just like you would normally and you're left with that and then what we do is Using the brush, just brush back over it with a little bit more. And what this does, if you're wondering, is it creates um, a film for that decal to sit into. So where those microscopic, uh, well, the microscopic texture that you've got in your paint film because it isn't glossy, this varnish fills that in or provides something so the decal can sit on top of it and where it needs to it will get pushed out and where it doesn't need to it'll stay behind the decal and that's what stops the silvering i'll probably do a bit a bigger video on the whole subject well i will no, probably about it i will at some point so even over detail like here i'm sticking this number three straight over a, a, a rib detail and i'm going to come at it from the side just roll across the whole thing it does help that the decals are very thin and awesome, to be fair. And excuse the sniffles, I have got a bit of a cold. And then we pop a bit more gloss over the top. If you go a bit mad with the gloss like I just did, just roll it back off again with your, with your cotton bud. And that's it. 
once you're happy with the placement and that they're pushed down enough quite simply I've just wrecked that one because it came off with the cotton bud so even even better we'll go all over again just to show you how easy it is to use the, the decals this way because this doesn't soften or melt or fragilify the decals in any way unlike decal solvents which very much do all it's doing is providing that little bit of bulk to take up that surface texture so that the decal doesn't silver and that's it leave it to dry and in the process of drying the paint shrinks obviously as we know and that shrinking process pulls the decal down with it um, which leaves it tightly adhered to the surface trapped in between two layers of varnish as it is tightly adhered to the paint finish and shrunk down nice and tight and jobs are good and, and we've found a use for aqua gloss clear all in one go anywho I'll carry on with this and I'll see you shortly here we go then all done on the growler or the triumph if you prefer so weathering wise I, as I said I didn't want to go nuts and I didn't there's uh, some earth tones on the tyres essentially and some spatter and some spray effects underneath and uh, around about the place and a bit of dust effects on the upper surfaces uh, along with some dark wash in places where dark wash was needed um, well, with that done I've I've gone, with, gone ahead and done uh, the decals which as I said have went down really really well you can see absolutely no sign of the carrier film it's, they've, they've gone down beautifully and finally just the last few little pieces popped on this morning um, the cables, the, the feet for when they uh, raise the thing and a few lamps and whatnot. painted all the headlights and things on the front and painted the tail lights on the back so yeah all finished um, and what a cracking little kit it is uh, not very big as you can see an awful lot of parts and an awful lot of detail packed into this I, uh, I was not able to animate the, the jack for raising and lowering the missile tubes unfortunately but it's still there as an option that, that can be displayed upright in the launch position or pop back down in the travelling position underneath it is a little simplified from other Zvezdas I've seen uh, which I think is entirely fair enough it isn't a large scale or a large model but and there's plenty of detail there in fairness but obviously things like this are a, a little on the bland side and perhaps could do with a bit of embellishment it, it was a very complicated build there's a lot of parts there the suspension in particular is obviously got eight wheels and uh, each of those eight wheels is held in place with a double wishbone arrangement all of which were separate parts um, which all were quite fiddly and handed they all had to go the right way up to fit um, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the bum but uh, but yeah here we go it's done I think this thing in 35th scale would be would be incredible uh, dread to think how many parts that might have if Zvezda did it uh, <laughs> two, two and a half thousand or something stupid um, but in 35th scale this would be quite something I don't know if such a thing exists or not it probably does but in 72nd it's quite manageable it's a manageable little project it's a manageable sized finished model uh, is a little bit of a com complicated build and it isn't helped as I mentioned initially uh, the instructions aren't the easiest to follow uh, as, I, as evidenced by my messing up the the truck bed arrangement and on that note if anybody does want two-thirds of a triumph kit just let me know because <laughs> you can have it so to refresh this is the kit in question there's Vesta 172nd C400 or S400 or SA21 I do not know which growler or triumph here's the finished thing on the box retail price here in the UK is around 30 pounds uh, which potentially doesn't sound the cheapest especially when you consider the price of the 35th scale Mustang trucks is only around 35 but this is not 
significantly less complex and I think the size of the parts isn't what makes a kit expensive it, it, it's the quality of moulding of the parts uh, are realistically available anyway here for around about 25 to 26 pounds and at that price I don't think you can argue very complete package excellent decals couple of different uh, schemes in there and a really really excellent looking finished model I think so as ever this one has been built for the hobby company who are the UK importers of Svenster kits so if and when we ever get to do model shows again those of you who frequent model shows may well get the opportunity to see it in the flesh uh, and be distinctly unimpressed I'm sure uh, if not anybody who fancies it Russian military vehicles Vesda are the place to go I think uh, and this is available in all sorts of good uh, hobby shops in the UK easy to get hold of anyway that'll do for this one thanks very much for watching along hope you got something out of it uh, so until next time look after yourselves look after each other and Genesis out <laughs>